Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Hawaii's Champions. Whoa, very important. A brand new show, Hawaii's Volunteer Champions, with the host of that show, Peter Rossick. So, Peter, you know, you're a great host. You're a great supporter of Think Tech. Thank we you. love having you on for anything you want to do. But could you tell us what you want to do on Hawaii's Volunteer Champions? Sure. Well, obviously, it's about uh, some exemplary volunteers here in Hawaii uh, and about uh, the organizations they volunteer for. Uh, my sense is that uh, volunteers are, first of all, very, very important. A lot of uh, wonderful things in our society would grind to a halt without them or be much diminished. But uh, volunteers, I think, tend to get a certain amount of uh, credit within their organizations, but beyond their organizations, they probably don't get as much uh, thanks and as much recognition as they should. Uh, and the organizations as well, uh, don't often have a chance to say how important volunteers are for them and what they do and what they uh, could not do without them. And, and essentially I have a one great question and that is why do people, uh, give up their most valuable resource, which is not money, uh, but is time and personal effort for some cause or other. Uh, what leads human beings to do that? And uh, how do they feel? What do they get back? All that sort of thing. So that's kind of my goal in uh, going beyond the uh, simple recognition of some people who really do a lot of good work. You know, you're going to have to convince me, Peter, because uh, I, I frankly don't think there are enough champions, enough volunteer champions in the state of Hawaii. I mean, you're an exception. A lot of people on ThinkTech are an exception, um, but there should be many more. I mean, we have a, 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 a civil society which is kind to it, each other. We're caring about the, our community together. And yet, um, where are the champions? I do not see them. Tell me where they're hiding. Well, perhaps they're hiding in plain sight. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, you know very well. And first of all, you are uh, an exemplary volunteer. You have been the empresario of ThinkTech for 20 plus years. Uh, and uh, so you are one of the leading champions of not just volunteerism, but about civic engagement. And pretty much everybody, uh, you've got a staff, a terrific staff of a, a handful of people, a small handful, uh, who, who are, are paid. But everybody else, all the show volunteers, uh, are, all the show hosts are volunteers. Everybody who appears is a volunteer. Uh, so you're acquainted with a lot of people who uh, do stand up. But perhaps you haven't heard of the people that are working in other areas and are, uh, you know, giving what they can give, perhaps not, you know, like you 24 uh, seven, 25 seven, I think sometimes uh, that you're giving to think tech and to the community, but, uh, you know, are giving what they can give and uh, giving the time and, and putting in a lot of effort. So one goal is to recognize the fact that there are plenty of people doing things, not everybody uh, 100% of the time, but people doing what they can. And secondly, uh, perhaps we'll get some recognition, uh, you know, as the number of people who watch the show, I hope, increases, people will think, well, gee, I could do that too. I could be a volunteer for, uh, you know, the aquarium. Those folks are going to be on next week or for Hawaii Marine Rescue, which we had a show recently, or, or for a lot of other things. And I think, uh, you know, if we could, if the result of this show is a, a dozen more volunteers by the end of a year, I would have considered it, first of all, a lot of fun, which is why I do this. But secondly, it will be an accomplishment. And the only way to get more volunteers is to, you know, get more volunteers. Uh, the number of people who are going to stand up uh, of your stature are, are not that many. Uh, certainly, you know, most people are still working and scrambling to get a living uh, here in Hawaii. But those who can, you're absolutely right. We should have more people standing up uh, and not just, quote, politicians who are, uh, first of all, paid in, in some cases now too much and, and uh, you know, who, are, who get a lot of power and glory out of it. But uh, there's a lot of other things people can do, even for, uh, surprisingly, I'm learning even for government agencies, some of them depend on volunteers as well. 
obviously the nonprofit sector. So let's hope we can get, uh, you know, we can rustle up some more people. Do we have enough? Will we ever have enough? I doubt it. Uh, but that's kind of my hope is that people will get a little bit of inspiration out of this. You know, um, and I keep myself out of this, but um, it seems to me that the best volunteer is the most modest volunteer. Um, and that makes that by definition, Peter, that makes it very hard to find them. So well, how do you, you stand on Bishop and King with a, a sandwich sign and say volunteers welcome? What do you do? Well, the first thing, and this gives me an opportunity to say this, uh, if anybody is watching this, our, both of our viewers, uh, eventually maybe a few more, if anyone knows of any volunteers uh, who deserve to get some more credit, uh, they should let me know. And they can do that by sending an email to Hawaii's Volunteer Champions at gmail.com. Uh, or if you know of an organization that is dependent on volunteers, let me know about that. Or if you know of an organization or are you part of an organization that could use some more volunteers, uh, let me know. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Most volunteers, unlike, well, we'll leave both of us out, uh, unlike you and me, are, are rather humble and shy about what they do because they feel they should be doing more or they don't really even understand how valuable they are, which is why for every show, I hope to have somebody from the actual organization. Uh, the president or the volunteer coordinator or whatever that, whoever that person might be, who will be able to say, you know, Joe is not really telling you all that he does, or he's not really telling you how valuable he is. So you're right. It's going to sometimes, I think it may be a little bit of challenge to, uh, you know, pull the, the information out of people. Uh, sometimes it'll be, to, you know, people will love to go on about, oh, here's what I'm doing. But uh, I want to have people from the organization who have a bigger picture. You know, somebody may be doing something very valuable for an organization and not really understanding uh, the other parts of what's involved. So uh, that's why I hope that every show or most every show that I'll have somebody from that organization uh, come on and say, uh, be able to say what the organization does and why the volunteers are so important. Okay, but are you looking for you know, subject matter or people? I mean, that's a really interesting question because if, if you wind up having the same conversation with one volunteer after another, that's what they call boring. Uh, <laughs> so it's Dr. gotta Dr. be differentiated on the basis of something that's not boring, something that makes each one different and perhaps exotic. Well, there, there are several things. That, you're absolutely right. And I don't wanna be doing a show every week that just says, Joe Blow is a wonderful volunteer and we couldn't have an organization without him. So one thing that will be different are the organizations, I hope, because they cover the range of uh, everything, you know, friends of the library, the friends of people who, who volunteer at the, uh, at the Honolulu Museum of Art and people who volunteer for some government programs, as I said, like DLNR has some programs that depend on volunteers. So I hope there, I hope there'll be, I'm going to work very hard to get a variety of organizations involved, but I'm also going to try to get a little deeper, uh, as, as you have suggested to me earlier, uh, you know, what is the secret sauce? What is it that makes people uh, do this and give up their time and their, and their energy uh, to do it? And, and the other thing which I have discovered, uh, which is basically what led me to do this show, I have discovered that once you have a volunteer on, on in front of the camera and you can spend a little bit of time with them, uh, everybody has kind of as an interesting story. Uh, the I'll briefly tell you the origin of this. Uh, I went to I'm a volunteer for the Friends of the Libraries of Hawaii, and I went to their annual meeting, which they hadn't had for a couple of years. So they actually honored two volunteers of the year, and they talked about these people. And they and all of a sudden I realized one of them was an acquaintance of mine. All of a sudden I realized I didn't know anything about them really. I didn't know their background. I didn't know their skills and their, I didn't know their hobbies and their passions. And I think if I can explore some of these people a little further uh, and get into, you know, what, what brought them to today or what brought them to the point of volunteering or, or what they did in a previous life, 
I think it will be very interesting to me, and I hope very interesting to our viewers. But when we get to the point that uh, it's the same show every week, just with a different name on it, you will tell me and I'll, I'll stop. No, what I'll tell you is um, I'll give you different angles. That's what I'll tell you. And then well, you avoid that problem altogether. Give me a different. Well, what's tell me right now? What you know, what are the angles you would pursue? Because you're two, the two you're, come to you're, mind, you're the interviewer extraordinaire. Two come to mind. Okay, what is otherwise missing in your life that you are finding in doing this volunteer thing? You know, a guy may have been or a girl may have been involved in some other kind of business, some other job, what have you. And there was something missing, and and then then he or she moves over to, or adds on a volunteer experience, and and now is able to you know find what was missing, and it's it's the missing piece approach. Yeah. The other the other question I suggest to you, and this is only broad brush, you know, just for now, um, is the transactional nature of it. You know, people think that volunteers are completely uh, altruistic. And they do it for the greater good. And there are those. There are those. Mm. Um, but there's another thing working here. And that's the transactional nature of the deal. I'm thinking of a, of a, of a, of a young person who volunteers to clear the trails um, on IAEA mountaintop for DLNR. Okay? Um, so on the one hand, certainly that helps. And DLNR doesn't have the funding or the opportunity or the time or energy or political will to go out and hire people to do it. So they call hypothetically for volunteers. Now, why uh, are you, why, why am I interested in that volunteer experience? Well, it's transactional. Sure, it helps the uh, IAEA loop trail. Sure, it helps DLNR and the government. Sure, it helps tourists. But it also helps me. I'm getting out. I'm getting out in the, in the sunshine. I'm um, I can see beautiful things. I can touch the leaves. I can feel the ground. I need that. So just as much as it helps others, it helps me. It's a deal I make. Um, yeah, that's absolutely right. And this in the show that I've just done uh, with somebody who is a volunteer for the Hawaii Marine Rescue, uh, and that is the people who go and, and uh, protect the sea lions that wash up on the beach at Kaimana and other places and so forth. And I said, you know, how did, why did you choose this? If, you know, assuming you're going to spend, you've decided to volunteer. And she said, you know, I like being outdoors, just as you say, you know, it got something she got definitely was getting something out of it. She liked, she was, uh, she had a lot of responsibility when she was down there by herself. You know, she had backup uh, that she could call, but she had a lot of responsibility and she clearly enjoyed that responsibility and enjoyed being uh, the one on the beach with the uh, T-shirt and, and walking up to people and explaining to them what was going on. So there's no question that people get a lot out of it. Uh, very frankly, I do some volunteer stuff and I do it mostly because it fills my time that uh, since I, I retired and I was very worried about not having uh, enough structure or enough activity in my life. So I volunteered for some things that, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm obviously not volunteering for anything I don't like or believe in, but the, my main thing is I'm having uh, my time filled and I'm having a good time. Uh, and very frankly, these shows on ThinkTech, uh, if I wasn't having a good time and getting a lot out of it personally, uh, I would not be here. So um, I, I think we get, you, you are a person with a larger mission than I am. Uh, you want to make this world a much better place. That's wonderful. I'm certainly in favor of that. You want to raise the awareness of uh, the world beyond our, our shores. And I'm, that's fine with me too. But if I weren't enjoying it, and if I weren't having fun, I would be out of here, you know, faster than a jackrabbit. So you're right. I mean, people do it. People, nobody does it entirely uh, for altruism, and maybe not even the majority of it is altruism. Although I, I hope they do. They are volunteering for uh, groups or causes they believe in. Let's talk about age. Let's talk about um, what do you want to call it? Generations and chapters in life. Um, sure. You know, we have had uh, altogether, you know, over the years, we have had something close to 400 hosts 
And uh, at, at the moment in time, it's maybe 50 or 60. So what that tells you is they come, they go, and they move on. Okay? So, um, you know, volunteering for a given purpose or cause doesn't last forever. It, it always has a sunrise and a sunset. They right. told me that when I started to do shows for Hawaii Public Radio. They said, you got to remember it has a sunrise and a sunset. And I do, and I've seen that proven many times. But, you know, age is part of this thing. So if I, if I find somebody who is, say, 20 years old, that's one approach um, to volunteering and to being a community champion. Mm -hmm. um, and the skill set that that individual may have may is not going to be the same as somebody who's been through business uh, for years, uh, for a lifetime, a career, and has seen it all and comes and wants to volunteer, you know, in, in, in that chapter of his life or her life. So can you talk to me about which one you want to have on the show, which one is more important to you and the conversation and the takeaway uh, and and how you treat them differently, I expect. Well, you're absolutely right that, that first of all, it's in, it's there's a big age factor. Uh, when you're young and you're either in school or you're starting out at work or you're starting out raising a family, even if you want to volunteer, you probably don't have as much time as you'd like to. So uh, it, when we can find younger volunteers, uh, I will be very excited to talk to them. Uh, there's also a factor, uh, some high schools and maybe perhaps even some colleges uh, have a requirement for community service. And uh, I'm gonna try to get some of the people that go through that. They're far, they're, they're the, uh, you know, we used to call them voluntold. They were told they were gonna volunteer and they better find something to do and, or they're even assigned something to do. So, you know, I think it'll be interesting when I can get to these people and I've already, I already know a couple, but, uh, and, and talk to them about it. Do you really think you're doing anything worthwhile or do you just think it's something you're, you know, a box you're checking off? Uh, or, you know, did you, when you came away, one, one young woman in particular, again, I'm talking about the Friends of the Library of Hawaii, uh, was assigned to, to get a certain number of community service hours by her high school. And so she signed up, figuring this was a pretty easy thing to do, which it was. It wasn't, uh, you know, heavy lifting or anything. And when her hours were up, she continued to volunteer and gave a few hours every week to the organization. Why in the world would she do that? She's got a social life. She's got books to read. She's got family and probably responsibilities there. So I think one of the things you, we need, you find out is, uh, you know, how did you come to volunteer? Well, I came to volunteer because I was required to, uh, or maybe even the court sent me to uh, do community service hours. But when I finished, I decided I wanted to stick with it, or I decided to find something else to give some hours to. So I think that's clearly a part of it. Obviously, a lot, a lot of volunteers are people who are older, retired, uh, or, you know, well along, and they're perhaps empty nesters or people who have a certain amount of time on their hands. And uh, that's probably the overwhelming majority of, of volunteers, the people who give the, the most time. But again, the, uh, the woman that I interviewed with Hawaii Marine uh, Rescue was not an older person. Uh, she was, uh, I don't guess women's ages very well, but she was still working from home. And she, as I said, she wanted to get out of the house. And uh, so she volunteered in a job that was very different from what she does at home, which is sit at a computer. So I do think uh, there are some, some great similarities and there are, there are obviously differences by people's time of life. And you're absolutely right. No volunteer is forever and uh, no volunteer gig is forever. I have already kind of moved away from one of the volunteer gigs that I was enjoying, but I just got a little tired of it. I got a little bored and I thought, you know, I'll go find something else. And this morning I went and volunteered for the first time for another organization. So I don't think anybody expects volunteers to be around forever, great if they are, and they learn and they can, they can add to what, you know, their abilities. But, you know, nothing in this life is forever. You know, the saying, you'll never get out of this world alive. So, uh, you know, people change and people, people's abilities change on what they're able to do, what they're willing to do. 
uh, I used to be willing to stand at the Waikiki Aquarium out by the edge of the reef in the, in the heat and uh, show people the marina animals. Uh, now I kind of like the gift shop. It's air conditioned. So, you know, it, it all changes. And one other thing I, I do want to talk about with uh, the people, mainly the people from the organizations, uh, I want to ask them, uh, you know, everybody assumes uh, very often you've got a problem. Uh, we don't have enough staff. So get some volunteers. But I don't think most people really appreciate how uh, difficult A, recruiting and B, retaining, uh, training and retaining volunteers are. Uh, they're a very pesky bunch. Uh, they're not being paid. So if they decide they don't want to show up today, very often with very little notice, they don't show up. And they, they're demanding, very frankly, some of the volunteers I'm familiar with, uh, you know, it's got to be their way or the highway in terms of what they do and how they do it. So uh, managing a bunch of volunteers is not, uh, it's not a picnic. The Hawaii Humane Society has two full-time people just to manage the volunteers that they have. And one of the questions I'm going to ask pretty much everybody uh, and uh, is the volunteers is to say, you know, what would you change? You've been a volunteer there now for some amount of time. You've done this kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, we don't want you to, obviously, if you really hated it, you wouldn't still be around. So I'm not expecting them to, uh, you know, to, to talk junk about their organization. But what would you change? And, you know, the one answer that I've had so far is more training. Uh, this person wanted to have more information, more training, more ability to uh, and again, this is the marine resource woman who's out on the beach by herself uh, in a T-shirt that says Hawaii Marine Rescue, trying to keep the tourists and whoever else and the, the people that are killing, killing uh, uh, sea turtles and, and, and seals, trying to keep them away from there. Uh, and what do I need to know? How much, how do I, how do I deal with the people that I need to deal with? So there, this woman clearly said, I want more training. And the woman from the organization said, you know, we recognize that and we're going to try to, to do something about it. So I hope to also uh, do a little bit of facilitating with people who want to uh, expand their experience or want to find something else or uh, you know, maybe at the end of the show, I'll say, you know, you're volunteering for the wrong organization. You should really be, or be volunteering yeah, for yeah, another organization. Yeah. I don't think I'll get very many friends from that. But, uh, you know, I think it is an inter interactive kind of thing. And, and it's important to realize volunteers are very, very important, but they're not the end all and be all. Uh, they, they come sometimes with Sometimes they have to be terminated. And sometimes they have to be terminated, which is really tough to fire somebody you're not paying and you're not, you know, you don't have really any control over. So, uh, you know, it's it's a whole world that I think uh, I hope to uh, illuminate, not just the individual uh, people who are doing it. And we'll see if it works. What about tough questions, Peter? You know, you got you got a tension on that. On the one side, you want to you want you want to really get to the core. On the other side, you don't want to offend somebody who is, you know, fragile as a volunteer and, you know, you know, and fragile as a guest on our shows, too. I mean, if you get into an argument, uh, that person may never come around again and may talk stink. So his friends won't come around again. And so there's a there's a there's a dichotomy there. Um, on the other hand, sometimes you've got to ask a hard question. I'll give you an example. Okay. <clears throat> There are 342 nonprofit organizations staffed largely by volunteers who deal with the homeless in the state of Hawaii. Do you think that's too many? Do you think there may be some duplication of effort? Do you think it could be managed, it could be managed more efficiently? Um, and do you find that you're jamming into someone else while you're doing your work for the homeless? Couldn't that be better? This is to a CEO or something, and uh, you know, I think that kind of question really d deserves a place in this show that you're talking about. Absolutely, and I agree with you that I think uh, you know I'm I'm a little more diplomatic, perhaps, but uh, you know I would start out in that case by saying you know how does what you do relate to 
uh, what the other organizations in your category do? And then, uh, you know, are you duplicating effort? And wouldn't it be better if you, you got together, which you know is very hard because no organization wants to give up their, uh, their piece of the action or uh, if, they're pay, if they're, they do have paid staff, they don't want to give up their, that part of it. But I think it's a very legitimate question. I'm not sure how deeply it can be explored in this venue, but I think it's something, uh, you're quite right, there are a lot of duplications in social services, there's a lot of duplications. Homelessness is obviously one of them. I mean, you know, a good example is uh, there, for a long time, there were people out there feeding the homeless in, in, in the park downtown by the Hawaii Theater, and they were doing it for religious on a religious basis, but it was totally counterproductive to what the city was trying to do in terms of getting people out of that park. And finally, after a lot of negotiation, I think they prevailed upon the organization to, to move their feeding or to, you know, to not become a, uh, make that park a magnet for people who would obviously come early and stay late. So, uh, you know, I think there's some really legitimate questions to be asked. How many- Where does are... religion fit in this, Peter? You know, I mean, a lot of charitable work in this state and everywhere is done by various religious organizations. Some of them more effectively, more, you know, more genu genuinely than others, but religion plays a role in this whole environment you're talking about. So Absolutely. where does it play a role in terms of selecting the volunteers and in questioning the volunteers? Yeah, uh, I, I would tend to look at the volunteer activity more than the religious organization that is behind it. Uh, so, you know, Catholic Charities, as an example, does a lot of work with with the homeless and with people, uh, uh, people, the houseless or people who are uh, uh, living on the street and they do a lot of uh, drug work and so forth. I'm not Quite, I'm not so interested in in Catholic charities per se, uh, or why Catholic charities does that. I'm interested in what they do and how effective they are, as you say. So I don't think I'm going to be uh, going from the Methodists to the uh, Southern Baptists to the uh, to the Lutherans to find out, you know, what's going on. So uh, I see we don't have very much time left. Uh, I want to thank you very much for doing this. Uh, if you have any unanswered questions, we'll we'll get another half hour. But uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it, and you've you've helped me think very clearly about some of the things I want to do in this show. And I hope people will watch this and then watch subsequent shows ahead. And I want to thank you again for all you do with Think Tech Hawaii. And and thank you, Peter. Absolutely. You're a, a great participant in these programs. We just love your work for Think Tech, and we're looking forward to seeing this show flower out into a, a statement that's much broader and and a support that much that's much broader for our volunteer champions than it is now. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And I want to close as I will close every show with a, a thought uh, about volunteerism. And uh, Michael will put it up on the screen um, and uh, talking about the purpose of life. And I encourage people, I hope you'll come back to future shows of Hawaii's volunteer champions. Again, Jay, thank you so much. And um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks or I'll see our viewer, viewers, both of them. I'll see all of uh, our viewers in a couple of weeks. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.